Hey, do you want to learn how you can automatically deploy your Node website to Linode using Docker? Then you've come to the right video. Allow me to give you a little overview of what we're going to be building today before we actually start building it. You have your local project here and you have your running website here with clients and people that access it on Linode. Now you push something to the master branch. You have like finished your code, your feature, your something and it gets uploaded to GitHub. When something gets uploaded to GitHub on the master branch, we trigger a workflow here that automatically builds our Docker application and uploads it to our Docker Hub account. And then it connects to a server via SSH and then it runs an automatic update script that pulls the newest image from Docker Hub and relaunches the container. So now that our client or user or stakeholders or boss or whoever sees the current changes on the website, you start to close the gap between what you push to your repository and what your project is doing to what is actually live in deployment and development. This entire cycle is not only applicable for Node or Express, but can be used with almost any kind of software that you want to deploy to a server. You could use the exact same process, for example, for a Discord bot that you would want to host online over a Linode server. Now let's go from the theoretical to the actual practice. We have a Linode setup here that is running a website. This is the repository of the website and this is my Visual Studio Code environment. If we now change something about the website, let's say after a hard day of developing, we've added a new line to this, we've updated and have done some features. And we're ready to check out and go home for the day. So we, of course, upload it to GitHub by doing git add git commit dash m. And let's push it to the repository. Now that it has been pushed to the repository, we can look under the actions tab, which is the second step in our pipeline here. And we see the commit update to main site, which is currently pushing our Docker image to Docker Hub. If we click on the action here, we can examine it under the microscope and see which smaller step of this action is currently running. Now that the Docker image is pushed to Docker Hub, it is telling our Linode server to update. It's doing that by an SH script that is being run on the server. After both actions have completed, we can now hop on over to the site, refresh the page, and we see that our update has been deployed to the Linode. If this is something that you want in your own development cycle, be it for websites, Discord bots, or anything else, then stick along for the journey as I show you how we're going to implement exactly this step by step. Let's quickly go over what you're going to need for this tutorial to follow along. You're going to need Git as a version control system. You're going to need GitHub to upload to the repository and use the actions. Alternatively, you could follow along using GitLab or any other system that you like. You're going to need a cloud hosting server of some kind. It doesn't need to be Linode, but I wholeheartedly can recommend Linode because I just love these dudes. You get 100 free credits if you just sign up with the normal website. No sponsorship deal attached here because, sadly, I'm relatively new. You can just create an account and grab 100 free credits to follow along with this tutorial. I also recommend having an editor like Visual Studio Code or WebStorm. And obviously, you need to have Node installed. I also recommend installing the Node version manager and the Node package manager. You can also find a list of all the important links in the description. If you already have an application and have it uploaded to GitHub and everything, you can skip the following part where we create an express application and upload it to GitHub. For this tutorial, I'm going to set up a simple express application. You can do that by typing in npm init-y for the default options. Now it has created a package.json file where all our information about our dependencies are stored. Let's install our first dependency npm install express which is a popular web library for node let's create our index file and let's create our html file if you want visual studio code to create a boilerplate for you for html just just type in bang and tab there you go you have a boilerplate i'm gonna use the title linode is life because i love linode and for the body we're just gonna throw in something so that we know that there's a body at least my body do what you want what you want with my body <laughs> Okay, no, no, I might just get the copyright strikes for the terrible singing. And for Express, I'm just going to be copying over the Hello World Express example and pasting it in here to save you some time. What this thing is doing is essentially just we're requiring Express, then we're going to create an Express app. We set it on the port 3000. After copying the Hello World example, we can modify this a bit to allow our home.html to be used here. So we're going to be reading the file and the file is dot slash for the current directory home.html the trust that is utf8 and then we're either gonna get an error back or we're gonna get our html back and that's equal to this function if we have an error for some reason we just gonna return response send service currently unavailable and if all of this works we can just say respond send and we're gonna send back the html that should be it let's test it out 
no dot and our application is listening on port 3000 so if we go into localhost 3000 we see my body and Linode is live that's perfect okay now let's focus on getting this project up up onto github first step we need to take for that is to stop this application using control c and then type in git init. Now we have an empty repository here. Now we need to create a git ignore file dot git ignore because we want to ignore our node modules folder as we do not want to upload the node modules folder because as you know, it gets generated dynamically. So we just type in node modules and that should be good to go. Now you can see that node modules has been grayed out. Now we can type in git add dot to end to add any everything that's inside this current directory. So now we can say git commit dash m for the message and we're going to say initial commit now that all the files have been committed let's create a github repository and push to the repository once we arrive at github we can create a new repository here the repository name for me is going to be linode docker tutorial and we're not going to create a readme we can add a readme later if we need it now that we have this we're going to scroll down and we're going to push it to our repository we're going to go to git remote at origin we're going to paste this in here hit enter then we're gonna do git branch master so we're gonna name the current branch master i mean it's the name is currently master and last but not least we're gonna push to the master branch and that should work now if we check on github and click on the code thing again we see our application and note that we do not have the notes module folder in here because we have ignored it which is very very good now let's hop on to the juicy part of creating all the node server allow me to welcome you to the Linode dashboard we want to create a docker Linode that can then run our services. To do that, we just click on create a node. We go to the marketplace where you can get all kinds of nice applications. Like take a look through here. They even have, where, where, where is it, where is it, where is it? They even have beef, the browser exploitation framework. Ah, oh, this, this is nice. Asia cars, like even Arc servers, this is cool. Okay, what we need to do is to find Docker in here. Let me just do my control F cheat code here. After clicking on Docker, we can just scroll down and type in the name for root user. Let's call this, I don't know, let, let, let's give it my name. Let's call the root user Sebastian. And we're gonna give it a nice password. Perfect, it's a good password. We will not be using public keys and private keys for this tutorial. Maybe for another one. We want to not disable the root access. Maybe we can skip over this entire Linode API token thing and scroll all the way down to select an image. We want Debian 10. For your region, you pick the closest one to you. I pick Frankfurt D. And now in the Linode plans, this is the cool thing about Linode that I really love. How Linode does pricing is that they have a fixed monthly maximum and an hourly budget that's being paid. You can read all about this on their website, but this is why I love Linode. You pay like any other shared hosting provider, but it's a cloud provider, which gives you a nice computing power. You pay only for what you essentially use, but with a maximum cap. So you don't need to worry about cloud overflow. Hop on over to shared CPU. This is what we're gonna be needing for this small project. If you have a bigger project or more demands, then please go, go higher, even go to dedicated CPUs. But for me, a shared CPU is enough. We're gonna take one nanode, which is $5 per month, and we can click create Linode. Oh, I completely forgot the root password. Perfect. Do I need to enter anything else here? No, it should be all good. Now our Linode is being provisioned, and we're gonna get access to it any minute now. Now that our Linode is running, we can use the Lish console here to do all sorts of commands that we'll later need to do. Or what we can do as well is we can just copy the SSH access here, hit paste. Uh, yes, of course we want to trust the fingerprint and then we enter the root password and we're in, perfect. Now, if we try docker.ps, we can see all of our Docker containers currently running, which are none. Now let's get to preparing the container. Let's get to integrating Docker. Before we integrate Docker, we want to make sure that our Docker application can set a custom port for this application. To do that, let's hit this command here with, like, with an or statement and say process.env.port. Because later on, we're gonna have an environment variable that's called port, where our Docker application can set the port for this application. Now let's create a Docker file. We hit file, we type in Docker file, and we automatically see the nice icon pop up. The first instruction is going to be from where we're gonna decide what base image we want to use. I would like to use the node 12 base image, which comes already pre-installed with node. Now here we'll give our work directory a name by using workdir slash app. 
and any subsequent command or directory or anything else we're going to be using uses the slash app directory. Now we want to copy our package JSON files to the working directory, in this case app. And do not wonder about the asterisk here. This literally just stands for that after the asterisk, any character can follow. Well, I could use the package file or the package dash log JSON file. We're gonna just copy both. Now we're going to run npm install. And afterwards, we're gonna copy our local files to the working directory. We need a way to tell Docker that we do not want to copy the node modules folder here. And we can do that easily by creating a docker ignore file, which works almost exactly like the git ignore file. And you have seen the beautiful auto completion for the node modules. Now, remember when we set the environment port here? Now's the time where this comes in handy when we define an environment variable here by typing env key value. We're going to name the key port, sorry, in all caps. And the value is going to be 8080. Then we're going to expose the port 8080. The last thing that we need to do is to tell the container how it can actually start our application because everything else up until this point was set up. You can only have one CMD or a command inside the docker folder and we're going to just put in node and dot for the entire file. Now let's push the changes to github by using git add dot to add all the files and then we're gonna do git commit um, added docker file and last but not least we need to push the changes git push. If you now check on github we should see that we have the docker ignore and the docker file both in the directory. If you want to test out this image to see if it works before doing any of the other steps, you can build the Docker image locally. To do that, you will need to have Docker Desktop installed. And I would recommend the account of Docker Hub because this helps in the naming process of your files. To build a Docker file, it's relatively simple. We just use docker build dash t, then you're gonna take a username from Docker Hub, slash the name of the application, double colon, and the version number, minus 1.0. Afterwards, you need to enter a space and dot because you need to reference the path to the files or to the docker file that you want to use. Mine is in the current working directory, that's why I use a dot. Now a beautiful container is building. Do not forget to stay well hydrated throughout the entire building process. Ah, nice. Now we see that the docker file has completed the installation process. We should now be able to find the docker file inside the docker. If we go to images, we see Sebastian12 Linode docker. We can run this application here. Click run and our container is being spun up. If you now check inside the container, we can see that our application is running on port 8080. But if we go into the browser and paste this in, we see that we do not seem to connect to our application. Why is that? Because the port is only exposed inside the container. If you want to expose the port outside of the container, we can either do some fancy stuff with the command line, which is not that difficult, you're gonna learn later down in the tutorial, or let's delete the container for now and go back here click on run the container, expand, and we want to say that the local host or the local port for this is also 8080. Then we can hit run. Now open our container, we should see that the example app is listening on port 8080. And if we now hit enter, we actually see the application. Look at my body. <laughs> Linode is live. Oh boy. <sighs> well, now that we've confirmed that our Docker file is working 100%, we can focus on the uploading process. For the next part, you're going to need a Docker Hub account. You can create your account on the hub.docker.com website. Just fill out this form and get a free account today. And yes, the account is free for individuals at the time of recording this video. As we can see when we click on pricing, we see that personal, for personal use, you pay zero bucks. To do that, let's hop on over to our folder structure again. Let's create a new folder and call it .github. And inside the GitHub folder, we're gonna put in a workflows folder. Now we can create a new file, name it docker.push.jaml. The name is not really important. The important part is just that we put a YAML file in here with the name that we want to have for this action. Then we're gonna head over to the GitHub documentation tool for publishing Docker images automatically. Then we scroll down until we see this workflows.yaml file. We copy it, go over here, and paste the contents inside of you. The link for this is going to be in the description. This is the entire action. For the release type, if anything gets pushed to the master branch, we want this entire workflow to run. We can define this by having on, push, branches, and the master. Pay special attention to the spacing here because YAML files can be kind of funny. Those are secret steals that we're gonna have to set in GitHub. Those are fine. One more thing we need to do inside the docker push.yaml file is to set our image name. You need to put in your docker hub username in here and the name of your application or of your docker image here let's call it linode docker the rest of the file we can leave for now as is 
and then we can just say git add dot git commit dash m added github action and last but definitely not least we can say git push and now if we look over to github we see that we have a github slash workflows folder that has the docker push.yaml file inside it if we now go to actions we should see that we have an we have an added action here that is running and that action is currently trying to push our docker image to docker hub there's just one problem we have not set any username or password for docker hub so it's probably not going to succeed the the push to docker has failed at the step of logging into docker hub because we have not provided any credentials oh let's fix that we go over to our docker push.yaml file and we see what we need here we need a docker username and a docker password let's hop on over to the settings open them in a new tab because we're gonna need to jump back and forth here to copy the secrets let's go down to secrets actions and we want to create a new repository secret the name for the secret is going to be the docker username we're gonna paste this in here and the value is my personal docker hub username and let's add another secret to this repository which is going to be the docker password the reason why we want to create secrets by the way is that if you like me or in general have a public repository and you need to store any credentials here you do not want your credentials to be openly inside your config files like here because this is very dangerous if a bot or anyone else with malicious intent scrapes over your website or over your file and catches out your sensitive information it could end very badly for you for example if an attacker gets hold of an aws key or token for your online cloud they can run you into the ground with a very hefty amount of computing power they're using and you need to pay for it i know they're probably going to be bitcoin mining or something now for two secrets added we can go back here go on top two actions and we can hopefully try to rerun all jobs the action is successfully completed and if we hop on over to docker hub and refresh the page we can see that we now have Sebastian 12 Linode docker we now have a docker file which has just been uploaded by the github action now that we know that our docker image gets successfully uploaded to docker hub we need to do a little bit of work on our Linode before we can add the finishing touches to the github action file and run the automatic pull down script on our Linode we can connect to our ssh by copying the ssh here pasting it and i want to sign in with my password I've just quickly clicked the terminal to make the stuff that I now type in much much easy, much more easily readable. I'm gonna paste in the command that I, we're gonna use to install our just created docker image from docker hub. We're gonna use docker run to run our image, dash t dash d to detach it so that we still have the console free to type in whatever we want. Then we're gonna use dash p to map the port 8080. We set inside the docker file to the port 80 which is actually just the HTTP port. Then we're gonna give it the name with the dash dash name flag. We're gonna call it Linode docker and we're gonna pull down the image that we just created which is Sebastian 12 Linode docker and we're going to get the master image that was posted a few seconds ago then let's hit enter he says unable to find image locally so we're just gonna download it and it's a good point to take a quick coffee break before the load server speed runs the installation but just that in my cup there is no coffee i have tea in my cup strong black tea now that the image has finished downloading we can check using docker ps if it's running and yes our server is running and the best part about this is if we now copy our server ip address and we paste it in here we can see that the application is now actually running yes we are at the finishing sprint of this now we just need to create a bash script that allows us to automatically update this or pull the newest image then we just need to find a way to get github to run this script during the action like just after having finished the uploading of the docker container we're going to tell github to connect to the server via ssh and run the script and after everything is done this will be a beautiful system that automatically runs it's not the perfect system but it's a system that does its job let's hop back into the console thankfully i have the script already prepared and you just need to copy it we're gonna do nano update.sh because we want to create the the file first we want to make sure that we're rocking the bin bash shell by using a shebang slash bin slash bash then we want to stop the container that's currently running by using docker stop linode docker then we want to remove the linode docker image from the process list this does not remove the image from the server but it's just if you have the process list then you could restart the process this just 
takes the process out of there. Then we want to remove the image that we have saved of our Linode Docker application from the server. Then we want to pull our docker container down again, or the newest or the freshest version, because we have now removed the old one. Then we want to run the docker container by using the same command we tapped in before, docker run dash t dash d dash p. Then we map the port 8080 to the port 80. Then we set the name, Linode docker, which is the same name as here, so we can complete the loop in the end if we re rerun this command. Then we make sure that we get the right image, and then we can save it using Control o enter control x to get out of here if you now type in ls to list the directory we can see that we have the update.sh file here now we just need to add the permissions to run the file by using chmod plus x update to add the permission to the file to be executed then we type dot slash update.sh and now we can see the miracle of a script pulling down the docker image and doing all the updating and now we can see it deleted the old image it's pull currently pulling down our Docker image again. So take another coffee break or whatever beverage you're drinking. I'm drinking black tea. Ah, perfect. Now that this is complete, we should be able to dive, type in docker.ps. And we see that the container is still running. And if we go here, perfect. The last step that we now need to fulfill is to add the possibility to run a script via SSH to our docker push.yaml file. And conveniently, Apple Boy has already done a script on this. I do not know who Apple Boy is, but I found his GitHub action online, looked through it, and it looks kind of okay. If you scroll down, we need to copy this entire part, which is the remote SSH command. Then we go into our docker push.yaml file, go all the way back here and paste this. After pasting this in here, we can remove jobs on push and name because we're not going to be needing this and just check the alignment here. We now have two, two actions here that are getting started. One, the one part of the action is push to registry and the other part of the action is just to build. We can give this in the name and just say update ssh lin update ssh linode and we can give it the name telling linode server to update this is the name that's going to show up in our github action you're going to see it and instead of running the script who am i we're going to run bash update.sh before we push this let's enter the secrets into github so let's copy the host here hop on over to github go to settings down to secrets actions and let's add the new key let's add the host secret key go over to the node grab the ip address of your server and paste this in here click add secret then let's create another repository secret this time it's the username paste this in here and my username was root let's create another repository secret this time it's the password and finally enter your port. If you open over to Linode, we see that there's no special port defined for SSH. So they're probably using the standard port for SSH, which is 22. With all of our secrets now being set, let's push this to GitHub. Same process as always. Git add period to add all the files to GitHub. Git commit dash m. And let's say added SSH update. And that's not least we say git push. If everything worked out, we can now hop on over to our Linode Docker tutorial, click on actions and see that edit SSH update that the action is running. And I can immediately see that we have a problem here. Let's cancel the workflow and hop on back over here. We have encountered a problem because these two are not depending on each other. They're running concurrently. To add the needs condition to a job and make sure that it's pushed to registry because this task here needs to happen before the other one. And by default, GitHub is going to run both tasks at the same time or both actions here. So we need to tell GitHub to slow it down and wait with this action, with the update SSH node, until the Docker image has been pushed to the repository. If we now hop over to GitHub and go into actions, we can see that there's our edit SSH update action. And it's currently pushing the image to Docker and then it's telling the Linode server to update. Because of our needs keyword that we used, these depend on each other. So telling the Linode server to update is not getting used or is not getting run until the push to the Docker image or to Docker Hub has succeeded, which is exactly what we wanted. Push to the Docker image has succeeded and now we're telling the Linode server to update. Let's hop in here to see what it's currently doing. It's establishing a connection. This has worked. It's, execute, it's executing remote SSH command using our password. 
it's executing bash update.sh. And we can see the output from our server in here. How cool is that? Currently deleting the old Docker image. And if we now wait, we see that it has successfully pulled the image. And yes, as we can see, it has successfully executed all commands. And our job has been complete 100%. Now we come to the final test to see if all of our hard work finally pays off. Let's grab a Linode my body. Hop over to VS Code, go to your home.html, and type in updated it. So there's been an update and something has been changed. Let's go to git add so we can add all the files. Then we then we commit and we say let's say important update. Now we type in git push. Ah, this is so exciting to watch. We can see important update is running here. This is the name of the commit. And now we're pushing the Docker image to the hub. And then we're telling the Linode server to update as we did previously. But now this entire test is running. With the magic of editing, this will be done by the time I lower my coffee cup again. Ah, easy. Now we can hop on over to Linode and refresh the page. And as you can see, it updated it. Yes, this is so cool. Do you know how powerful this is? I, I think you do because you clicked on the video after all, but this opens the gateway to so much fun. This was just a small, like a small mini delve into parts of DevOps. I don't even understand DevOps or many other things in IT fully, but the project is definitely a hell of a lot of fun. So I would now say you best raise your coffee cup or your tea cup or anything that you drink up and toast to yourself that you followed along with this tutorial and you made it. Cheers to you and I wish you a beautiful day. I totally forgot, if you have any questions or suggestions for me, what I should program next, d tell me where you're stuck, where do you currently need help? I, I, I am stuck for ideas for videos. I really want to post a lot of videos for you and do more than I'm already doing. So I would greatly appreciate your input on this matter. So yeah, I I I'm happy for your suggestions and I'm really open. And until next time.